Um, thank you and uh, good afternoon to all. Um, well, uh, the picture that uh, Toby just uh, uh, offered on, on Iraq uh, um, is actually even gloomier when one looks at Syria. The anti daesh campaign in Syria was always going to be harder than the one in Iraq. Uh, first, because of the uh, US desire not to be entangled in Syria. Uh, second, because of the absence of a ready ally on the ground, like you know, Kurdish forces or Iraqi uh, government forces uh, in Iraq. The third one is because um, there was the impossibility of arrangements uh, with the Assad regime or Iran-supported groups inside, inside Syria to fight Daesh. And fourth, because of existing tensions within the coalition against Daesh about priorities. Who comes first, Assad or ISIS, um, in terms of, of addressing the problem? There are two other considerations to keep in mind when looking at, at Syria, and especially in comparison to Iraq. Uh, I would argue that in, um, in Syria, um, ISIS can appeal to a considerably larger pool of potential recruits who are spread across the country. Uh, I would argue that in Syria, geography and demography are uh, even greater uh, uh, problems than they are in, in, in Iraq. Um, so the point here is that uh, any strategy against ISIS was going to be difficult. Uh, but the strategy that the U.S. and uh, its coalition partners have settled on uh, was flawed from the beginning uh, in terms of substance, in terms of implementation, and in terms of how it was communicated. The result is that the profound disconnects in the strategy uh, against ISIS have not only been exposed in the past couple of months, but have been amplified. Um, a short assessment here. Um, has ISIS uh, been rolled back militarily? No. Has ISIS appeal uh, been eroded? No. Has ISIS momentum been blunted? No. Has IS the ISIS narrative been undermined? No. To the contrary, at every level. Let's look, examine for a second the CNN effect on Kobani and how, for instance, this played out and impacted um, the, the, the campaign. It's true that uh, ISIS uh, has been stopped in Kobani. Uh, but the, pro the process of getting there was extremely damaging uh, and, and actually highlighted the tensions in the coalition and the tensions between the U.S. and Turkey in, in particular. Kobane also served as, as a distraction from IS, IS advances uh, elsewhere in the country, further to the southwest, and I'll get back to this in, in a second. ISIS has also adapted to the massive resources dedicated by the coalition to defending Kobani. Uh, ISIS no longer sends its better or best units to seize the city, although that was undeniably an early objective of, of the jihadi group. Uh, now they sent actually what one would call uh, cannon fodder, uh, you know, less trained recruits, just to keep ten, uh, uh, pressure on the city uh, and keep this as a focal point, while most of the efforts, the real efforts, are elsewhere. More profoundly, Kobane has had an impact on narrative. Because for many uh, Arab Sunnis uh, who, have seen them, who see themselves on the receiving end of a three-year-long uh, uh, oppression campaign, very brutal campaign by the Assad regime, uh, Kobane makes it seem as if they were less worthy of um, being helped by the international community than minority groups, uh, whether they're Kurds, Yazidis, Christians, etc. To illustrate uh, the point, uh, my point here, um, I would refer to uh, the statement by Staffan de Mistura, the new UN Special Envoy on Syria. In his, the, it was the very first statement he made in September, and he invoked Sabrinitsha uh, to call for help uh, for the Kurds um, in, in, uh, in Syria, uh, in, in Kobani. Uh, well, um, ostensibly ignoring more relevant examples from right there in Syria. Um, there were many other examples to pick there from. And precisely this, this choice of wording has had an impact on how many Syrians look at, uh, at the struggle. Another illustration here is um, the conflicting statements we saw from US and other officials about the importance of Kobane, for instance. Um, Secretary Kerry, um, you know, in, I think in late September, early, early October, made a statement that Kobane wasn't very important. And a week later, uh, General Allen, uh, the general who supervises the, the campaign, uh, said actually it is a strategic objective. Um, 
There are other ironies worth po pointing here, uh, a, tw a, a, twin, a, tw a twin ironies here. Prior to September and the beginning of the anti-ISIS uh, strikes in Syria, the absence of Assad strikes against ISIS, especially in Raqqa, was seen as evidence of a tacit agreement, a tacit arrangement between Assad and ISIS, that both were benefiting from a, a focus uh, on fighting mainstream rebel groups first. Today, uh, the, the US and, and Assad strikes against ISIS and Raqqa are seen as evidence of a tacit arrangement between the US and Assad. Um, and this is extremely damaging in terms of rallying local support against ISIS in many Syrian regions. What is the ISIS strategy today? Uh, first, they're advancing on three axes. Uh, they're putting a lot of effort on the north, uh, 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 the northern side of the Aleppo countryside. They're basically seeking to cut the supply lines of, of uh, and and uh, and strategic depths of mainstream rebel groups operating there, uh, and they may be able to actually cut them from the, their last remaining uh, crossing point with with Turkey. Um, and this is, by the way, this is also where uh, the mainstream rebel groups are fighting a massive regime advance to cut off Aleppo. Um, the second axis is further to the south in the region of Hama. Uh, this, this advance is not receiving as much attention uh, in the media and policy circles as it should. And the third one is in the Hamas province, even further to the south, where ISIS has grown bolder and is trying to seize you know, gas fields, uh, etc. So what is the strategy? Well, I would argue that the strategy is pretty simple. ISIS understands that uh, success begets success, and it needs to maintain momentum, because momentum is what makes ISIS appear as the spearhead of the fight against Assad, uh, which many Syrians consider to be the priority right now. Uh, so right now, ISIS is focusing on winning in Sunni Arab areas, rather than actually trying to reach in deep into regime-controlled areas. Uh, because, you know, this is uh, the low-hanging fruit, as uh, Noah Bounsi, uh, a friend and colleague, uh, wrote uh, today in, in Foreign Policy, uh, but also on eliminating dissent in, uh, in regions ISIS controls. Uh, ISIS is also con conscious of coalition disagreements um, and is trying to play on them in its propaganda. And it's actually being effective uh, at, at some level. Uh, and ISIS is actually also attracting rebel fighters who prioritize the fight against Assad. And in, in this regard, uh, the, the rhetorical focus and the, the, the public statements uh, of American and other officials that uh, what matters now is the fight against ISIS, not Assad, has actually been damaging. Uh, there is a number of examples of uh, rebel units, including Liwa Dawood, for instance, who have joined ISIS. Um, so the point here is that the, strategy, the overall strategy is undermining mainstream rebel groups who are on the one side accused of being lackeys of the West uh, and the Gulf states, but on the other side are not receiving nearly enough weaponry to, to, to hold their, 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 uh, their front lines and push back both on ISIS and Assad. Um, my final point here has to do with uh, the, the cohesion of the coalition against ISIS. The Gulf states joined the coalition against ISIS primarily for three reasons. The first one was to clean their image that has been tarnished because of alleged uh, accus uh, or accusations that they uh, were too complacent or even in some cases complicit when it comes to the rise of extremist groups in Syria. The second reason was to prevent Iran from being seen as an alternative in this fight had the Gulf states stayed outside the coalition. And the third one is that the Gulf states joined the, the, the campaign precisely to influence U.S. policy, U.S. strategy on, on Syria. And so far, they have been unsuccessful. Turkey stayed out of the coalition precisely to, uh, uh, for, the, uh, for, for the same reason, but in, it was a very different approach. They stay out of the coalition to condition their entry into the coalition uh, after the U.S shifts a strategy on Syria. Both the Gulf states and Turkey have actually failed at, at this point. And I would actually argue that there are real problems in terms of the, co the cohesion of the coalition against ISIS today.